Hello everyone, welcome back to the Mule channel. My name is Colton and today we're doing a video on DC Comics shenanigans involving Diamond, creators for comics hashtag on Twitter, and Meg's Visagio's Vagrant Queen. Here we go. So there was news uh, the other day, I think it was yesterday, about DC Comics. They're doing a different uh, distribution stream. They want to try and get away from Diamond. And uh, we have an article here um, posted yesterday about Diamond Comics responds to DC releasing new comic books. Um, so basically it sounds like DC Entertainment wants to um, start up their own distribution so they can get their books to shops, which doesn't make sense because they've been using Diamond for about 20 years or something. And it's worked pretty well for them, so why would they all of a sudden go to a different distribution model? They must think that Diamond is going to go out of business or something. Which may be the case, may not be the case. But let's go over this article, and then I'll tell you some news about my local shop and what they released on Facebook. <clears throat> so earlier today, DC Entertainment now said that after three weeks of no new comics, they've set a date for when they will ship new, new issues to stores which is Tuesday, April 28th. This distribution announcement comes as Diamond Comics, the primary distributor of almost all comics in the U.S., remains closed while DC using alternate methods. Diamond has released their own statement about DC's intentions, confirming that they still intend to resume distribution in May and to still work with DC at that time. Um, here's the problem. is uh, <laughs> Almost everywhere in North America... Non-essential businesses are closed, and they're probably going to be closed until May 1st. Um, so that's about two months almost of being closed. And um, a lot of these companies are owned by small businesses. They have less than a million sales, and uh, they're in malls and stuff. Like, they can't pay their rent, basically. They have no income. And uh, they have probably re uh, gotten rid of all their staff that they can. The only staff on payroll are probably the owners. And um, some places might be closed till June. I mean, if these people think that we're just going to pick up regular operations in May and uh, everything's just going to be fine, um, that's not the case. <laughs> it's, it's a new world. I mean, people are going to stop buying clothing and comics and movie tickets and stuff as they did previously because it's been erased from their... Uh, hot, their um, their hobby, it's been erased, Alfred, it's been erased, um, like, it's been, it's gone, right, it's out of their, it's out of their tunnel vision, right, right now, and, um, you know, they may not come back to that hobby, um, just, just because you ship books doesn't mean they're gonna sell the same way they did before, comic book shops maybe they don't have enough money and they're just gonna focus on the big name books like batman uh superman and stuff like that right so things are not going to go back to where they were uh but here's diamond's um paragraph about dc <clears throat> they say we value our partnership with dc and will continue to support them as a distributor our focus is squarely on getting our industry's entertainment products in the hands of fans as quickly and as safely as possible as we shared this morning with our vendors and retailers, we are currently building our restart plans and targeting mid to late May for shipping new weekly product. If we see signs that it is safe to resume shipping earlier, we will continue, or we will certainly do that. However, with the limited number of retailers open and most customers on stay-at-home orders, our focus is on supporting our industry and the health and safety of our stakeholders. So you can say, hey, we're going to ship all your books, but if there's no stores to ship them to, if they're not open, if they don't have any customers, <laughs> other than like diehard customers, um, it's not enough. Um, DC makes changes to publishing schedule and offers a small number of books in the hope of some retailers ease back into ordering, getting a sense of what their business can handle. Deadline for guaranteed delivery on April 20th will be April 21st with Lunar Distribution and UCS Comic Distributors continuing to bring the new DC product to stores. So they say uh, these comics here are available for sale on Tuesday, April 28th. Batman 89, third printing, Batman Giant number four, so, but, uh, Nightwing 77, yeah, 
shit. It's all shit. <laughs> What's the next week? Batman the Outsiders, The Flash, Hawkman, Green Lantern Season 2. Those are okay books. That's But that's like... That's like 25... No, it's like 20% of the regular weekly books. This isn't going to do anything. I mean, people... I don't know why I don't know why they're doing this. We're releasing like five books a week. They think stores are gonna order them. <clears throat> they think <clears throat> excuse me. They think stores are gonna order them. <laughs> I don't know. I guess they want to ease back in. Maybe or um I guess these books are gonna be delivered with their uh their new distributors, so maybe it's just like a test. But anyway, that's kind of weird that DC wants to kind of break their relationship with Diamond all of a sudden. They can't just wait. Why can't they just wait until June 1st and go back to normal? Um, sorry, my cat is always around me. Alfie. Cat is always around me. Okay, so this is hashtag called Creators for Comics. And um, what Creators for Comics is, is, uh, is an auction. And uh, I'll tell you what's wrong with it. A, some of these creators have blocked everybody who would buy their product. Two, or or love the characters that they've worked on, you know, like Superman, Batman, Daredevil. They're all blocked. All the customers are blocked. So you've lost money there. You're doing this on Twitter, which doesn't work. I mean, the the tweets are sorted by, like, popularity, which isn't the bid, you know it doesn't work they do it on twitter because they think they're gonna cut corners on costs they're gonna they don't want to pay the ebay costs because these people are cheap they don't have any money (laughs) there's there's really no money in mainstream comics right now also what's wrong with it is where were these people the last like five years on the downturn of the comic book industry and the comic book stores where were these people why weren't they auctioning off things before? Like we got Joe Hill, um, Brad Meltzer, Gabrielle Bach. I don't know who that is. I don't know who some of these people are. Um, but where were these people like? Where were these people five years ago? They got they got all this stuff. You know they have. They have first printings of everything they've ever done, signed, CGC'd, everything. They have all the shit. They have all these perks and all the stuff at home, and they've... Why can't they give them to their local comic book shop to sell on their regular? Why does it have to take a pandemic for them to care about comic book shops? They only care about comic book shops because that's how they get paid, you know? It's like a movie th- uh, movie star caring about the uh, mo- movie theater business. It's not because they love movies. It's because that's the only way they get paid. This um, this auction looks so bad on these uh, comic book pros because they've been nowhere to be seen for five years. And then all of a sudden, oh, please buy my stuff. Please buy my stuff. We love comic book shops. You love comic book shops? You're... Your uh, variant covers, you're increasing the prices, adding five pages of story and you add another dollar to the price. Do you love comic book shops? Do you love the fans or are you just greedy pigs? And not only are you greedy pigs, but you don't even even have any money. You're so cheap. These people are so freaking cheap. Doing this on Twitter instead of uh, eBay where things are where they can just auction off like like normal. And probably make more money on eBay. Because not everyone has Twitter. And, um, you know, it's freaking stupid. Like, where were these people? Joelle Jones is cool. She's done a great job in Catwoman. But where has she been the last five years? (laughs) She draws and writes Catwoman. She couldn't have done uh, black and white ink stuff for her local shops. These people only care when the industry is burning and uh, it's going to go through major changes in the next 12 months. And they only care now 
because uh, they won't have a job. If it weren't for comic book shops, they wouldn't have jobs, but they've done absolutely nothing in five years to support them. And uh, they want to have all these variant covers, and you have to buy 100 to get this one. You have to buy 1,000 to get this one. It's nonsense. The next topic today we're talking about is Vagrant Queens. This is a TV show by... Or it's based on a comic by Megs Visaggio, the person who sells a thousand copies to comic book shops every issue. Yeah, this there's no reason this uh, comic book should ever have been made into a TV show. There's about a hundred better options. But why was it made into a TV show? Because it's woke. Because it's SJW. The main character is black. She's a woman. She has half her head shaved. That's the only reason this was even greenlit. And uh, if you type in Vagrant Queen into the news on uh, Google or DuckDuckGo, you can see all the like positive comments. Vagrant Queen is a neon-infused psyrop that you won't miss. A fresh take on the hero's journey. Sci-Fi's Vagrant Queen is a mashup of Star Wars, Firefly, and the MCU. <laughs> Oh my god. This sounds like the best movie ever. Oh my god. It's so good, but oh, we have to give up the first uh, episode for free. <laughs> oh my god. Sci-fi spacers boldly goes where others have gone before. It's all shill. It's everything is shill. All the uh, articles are all shill. However, if you look at the TV ratings, it's something different. A sci-fi western series, Fagrant Queens, stars blah blah blah. Show revolves around Elida, a former queen turned scavenger who's on the run since her throne was stolen by a child. Ratings are typically the best indication of so. so Show's chances of staying on the air. The higher the ratings, the better the chance for survival. The chart will be updated as new ratings data becomes available. Started off with 375,000 viewers. And it was 310. And then it was 208. And uh, we haven't seen yesterday's number yet. April 17th. But this is in prime time. It, episodes 1, 2, and 3 were in prime time. And got... Uh, what, 300,000 average? 298,000 average? That's really bad. That's really bad for a TV show. Um, oh. Especially for, um, like a sci-fi kind of uh, show on sci-fi. You think this would be like 600,000, a million... That's based on the best-selling comic book? No, it's doing very bad. And uh, 208,000 the last episode uh, in prime time. And now the episode last night, I think, aired at 11 p.m. That's what your boy Zach at Comics Matter, that's what he said. It's moving to 11 p.m. time slot. Ugh. <laughs> That's really bad. And you know why it's really bad? Because it was never meant to be a TV show. Why did you do this? Why did you do this sci-fi? It's ridiculous. This, sh this comic book sold a thousand issues to comic book shops while available in Diamond. <laughs> There's no market. There's no market at all for this TV show. I don't know why it was made. I don't know who it was made for, and uh, this is what happens when you make something that should never be made. My God, there's so many better comic book series uh, in the independents that you could have made a TV show on, and Vagrant Queens is a joke. Hello everyone, that is the end of this video. Um, please like the video, please comment on what you think about these three topics today. 
and uh, subscribe to the channel, please. I'd uh, love to get to 100 subscribers, and then after that, 200, 300, so on. Uh, I want, really want to get to 1,000 subscribers so we can get monetized and we can do more things on the channel. So um, please like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll see you on the next video. Thank you. Bye-bye.